Hi. Imagine that you own shares in a company. You would sleuth the company thoroughly. You know the CEO, you know the CFO, you know each member of the board of directors and the salespeople and the engineers. You know what employees are saying about each one of them, how successful all were in previous jobs, what clients say about them. Indeed, you know what their friends and family say about them. Then, one day, you read that the board just fired the CFO because he sold these shares just before the company announced a loss. And not only that, the new CFO the board hires specializes in bankruptcy. Oop. And not only that, you find that half the board members sold shares also before the loss, and they too are being replaced. Replaced by whom? You got it. By new directors with expertise in bankruptcy. What would you do? Obviously, consider selling. So why am I mentioning all this? What company am I referring to? It is not a company. Rather, it is the Federal Reserve Board of the United States. A few weeks ago, some of the Fed directors have been found to have traded their own account just before key announcements. The Fed chairman too. But not to worry, the Fed PR people say, all are on the way out and they will be replaced by good people who, by the way, are specialists in monetary bankruptcy. What to do? To answer this fully, first, a sidebar. In the dim past, the Fed's job was to keep inflation in check. No longer. Today, the Fed's job is to manage the stock market. I hope you know that, right? Wall Street even had a name for the team that does it, the Plunge Protection Team, or PPT. It's composed of Wall Street people and Fed people, most of whom have worked before on Wall Street, or apparently trade their own accounts on the side. After all, they are not in politics for their health, right? Now, who are these specific people, and why is it important? Well, a basic theme of this sleuthing channel is that in stocks, people matter. They are not interchangeable. There's not a generic CEO or generic CFO. Rather, it is people, people individuals, who make the numbers happen. Here are three examples. The first example, Chrysler was once a bankrupt company. It was worth zero, zip. Then came Lee Iacocca as a CEO. And in very few years, Chrysler became a $2 billion company from zero to two billions, one guy. Wouldn't it pay you to have sleuth Lee Iacocca's background to see and to hear what former employees say about him? Of course it would be. And if you had, you could have put some of these bills of the two bills in your pocket just by sleuthing. Here's a second example. More than 20 years ago, Apple fired Steve Jobs, one of the two founders, because John Scully, whom Jobs hired from Pepsi, was jealous of Jobs' star power, or so I'm told by people I've talked to inside Apple. Apple stock obviously tanked and fell as low as value of cash per share. So in 1997, the board brought Steve Jobs back after a few temporary CEOs, and with Jobs back, the stock soared since more than 100, 200 times. Evidently, individual people do count, right? But not just in business, in government too. In fact, in government, they count even more because so much more power is in their hands. No, not just the president or in Canada, the prime minister, but also people below them, especially the US Federal Reserve Board in charge of the money supply. So here's the third example, this one about the Fed. Everyone agrees today that Jimmy Carter was an, not a good president. He was a good man, but not a good president. In his presidency last days, the late 1970s, the US economy was so depressed that it was really a mini depression and inflation was 15% per year, basically a stagflation. Then Carter brought in Paul Volcker as Fed chairman to fix it all. It was one of the only right decisions Carter ever made. So when he lost by a landslide to Ronald Reagan, Reagan wisely kept Paul Volcker on because Volcker vowed to kill inflation. Few believed Volcker at the time because it was a big job after the mismanagement of the Carter years. The question before investors then was, will Paul Volcker prove to be a future Steve Jobs or a future John Scully? As is now evident, it was the former 
Volcker did a gangbusters job. Under him, the Fed cut the money supply ruthlessly. This hiked short-term interest rate to 20%, which in turn tanked the economy into a mini depression in 1982. But then, with both companies and individuals going broke, price broke too, since no one had any money to buy anything. And from that point on, inflation began to, fa to fall, and it fell and fell. And as inflation fell, so did the interest rates, and the market soared, and soared ever since, for the last 39 years. Yes. And now consider this. If you had sleuthed Volcker's character correctly in 1982 and had bet on him sticking to his plan, you could have made a fortune too, right? So yes, the character of the Fed chair does matter. It did then as it does today. What's more, um, today's chair not only did well, but he screwed up and was recently outed as an inside trader. And not only him, but also several of those around him were found to have traded their own account. And today, those other board members are equally important, perhaps even more so, because what is not commonly understood is that Fed monetary policy, meaning money printing, is today determined not by the chair's order, but by vote of everyone around the table. So the question of who is on the Fed board matters much more than before. Which brings me to a skill testing question for the stock sleuth among you. Have you ever sleuthed Fed board members as people? You know, those around the table who vote for more or less money supply. Who are they? What is their character, their background, their economic bias? This last is particularly important because over the last few months, as several Fed board members were outed as insider traders, it became clear that there's a move afoot to fire conservative Fed members, those who want to squeeze money supply, and replace them with loosey-goosey liberals who want to print even more money. The first obvious question is, why the sudden exposure of the rascals? One possible answer is an attack of probity in Washington and conscience. But the other possible answer is that apparently someone at the very top of the US government decided that although the Fed had printed trillions already, it is not nearly enough. Because whatever is coming down the pike in the market or in the economy is so big that it would require even more money printing, much more. So much more that even a single conservative monetarist on board could be a threat to this plan. When could this big event be, hypothetical event? Here come the speculative part. First, it is probably not around the corner, even though most expect it to be, or perhaps because most investors expect it to be. Only when most investors are finally euphoric, not skittish as they are today, will the market top out and the economy tank. But the second speculative reason, that this sudden exposure of conservatives inside the trader, of conservative inside traders among Fed officials, also sent a clear signal to all the remaining officials. Print more money right now, or you too will be outed, which means that short term, the market may continue to fly on the wings of even more fresh money. You disagree? You of course can. But please make first a list of all Fed board members. Sleuth the background, see which university they went to, whether to a liberal one such as Berkeley or a conservative one like Notre Dame. Read the economics papers they wrote then form an opinion about what they are likely to do if more money printing is required. Would they vote yes or no? Finally, see who they are being replaced by and then revisit your conclusion. Remember, your conclusion doesn't have to be exact. You only have to be 10% more accurate than other investors, most of whom never do more than five minutes sleuthing a day, if that. These are the people whose money you want to take, right? That's all for today. Please let me know in a comment below what you think of sleuthing the Fed people and whether you came to a different conclusion than mine. I'd love to hear about it. And if you like what we hear here, subscribe to the channel. Tell all your friends who they subscribe to. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.